We have been born into this world imperfect. We have been born into a world that is filled with sin. And the nature of this world, the sin nature began at the time when, um, when the fall happened back in the book of Genesis. Genesis 1 clearly teaches us that after men fell and they disobeyed God, they bowed down to the serpent and his lies and his deception, clearly sin came into the world and that is effect on all of us, on all our bodies per se. The mold of who we are has been distorted. We were supposed to be the men and women that God created in the garden has been completely distorted. distorted. Adam and Eve was created, God created men from the dust and he said that when he looked at it that it was good. Everything else he created in Genesis 1 was good. He looked at it and he was proud of what he has, he has created and he boasted about it by saying it was good. But then the fall happened and what happened during the fall was Sin came into the world and it disrupted the world. It disrupted creation as it was. So yes, God has put a standard in place. <clears throat> and when his word teaches us that he created them male and female, that was what he created initially and essentially. So when we look at creation today, when we look at our bodies, when we look at our physical bodies, who set the standard for perfection? Who said that every body that is created by God will come out perfectly? Yes, God created us, as Psalm 139 says, in the sacred place. He knitted us together in his mother's womb. But the minute we step out of our mother's womb into the sinful nature, we step out with some form of disability. You are disabled, whether you like it or not. You might look like your body is perfect, you might um, fit the standards of the world's perfection of what a body should look like, what the physical being should look like. But we are all disabled and if you reach within yourself, if you've ever had that struggle between your soul and your flesh, if you felt that there are times that I don't fit into this body, I don't belong into this body, then that is what I'm talking about. Some people are born with a physical disability that is um, obvious to the eye. We can all see it. People are born deaf. People don't speak. People don't walk. People can't walk. People are born into this world with um, a whole lot of issues that we come across. There's the question of being born intersexual, which means you are born with both um, male and female genitalia. And there is no answer. There is no answer that we can go back to in the Bible and ask, what does God say about this? <clears throat> Clearly we know that being um, sexual, immoral is a sin. But how do we deal with people who are born with disabilities? We cannot distinguish between a disability that is wrong and a disability that is right. A disability that we can handle as the church or as preachers or teachers of God, as children of God. We need to set an example for the world. How do we treat these people is what I'm trying to get at. How do we look at these people and how do we help them overcome this body that they've been born into? An interesting discussion that shows up in the Word of God in John 3 is when Jesus speaks to Nicodemus. He speaks to Nicodemus and he tells them then, we have to be born again. What does that tell you? He says we have to be born of the water and of the Spirit, which means that something is wrong in the way that we are born. Something is wrong in the way we came out of our mother's womb physically. And that is why we have that battle, that continuous battle between um, our spirit, our soul and our body. Our body does not belong, our spirit does not belong in the shell. This is just a, a temporary shell that we have been placed in and it's a messed up shell. It's a, a, a messed up um, vessel or a clay jar as we can call it or as we do call it. It is broken beyond measure. Unfortunately, it cannot be fixed. Yes, we can, we see healing crusades where people walk, people, you know, we try and correct them surgically and all that, but you find that people are still not satisfied in their bodies. 
And that is what Jesus meant when he spoke to Nicodemus. Nicodemus who was a Pharisee, which means he was a man set apart to do God's work. Very confused on the subject of being born again. How can I be born again? So you, ha you need that rebirth. And the process of the rebirth takes place during the salvation process. It's things that we need to understand as Christians is that there was the creation, there was the fall, and now you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you go through the sal salvation and redemption process, which is a process where you begin to understand what is happening inside of you if you do it correctly, if you do it with the help of the Holy Spirit. And at the end, you will be glorified. It's glorification that we are, we are seeking after. It's purification that we are seeking after. To come to a point where you, where your spirit and your body just, where you, where you grasp the understanding of what it is that this physical body stands for and what it is that your spirit realm stands for. I understand that people who go through, um, you know, we call them transgenders. I understand the intersexual thing. I understand the um, you know the confusion that goes around it all of us are confused it doesn't uh, you know separate them from the confusion that we go through when we look at our bodies when we try and crucify this flesh because that is what Jesus says we need to crucify this flesh and we have to lay down ourselves we have to follow him, but if we're going to follow him, we need to lay down our desires. We need to crucify the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the sin of the flesh. And he knew exactly what he was talking about because that's what he did. He lived in this vessel. He had an earthly vessel that he had to carry around with him as a deity, as the creator of all things. So he understand fully when he spoke about having to crucify the flesh because that's what he did. He went to the cross with pleasure because he needed his flesh to be beaten under submission. He needed his flesh to be bruised. You know, he went through the beating and he went through crucifixion because he had to show us. He had to show us physically what our flesh needs to go under the process that it needs to go under as hard and as painful as it is that confusion that it leaves in our minds as christians or just normal people is for the flesh to be beaten down to be broken to be to his blood needed to be shed as much as he was the lamb that was slain for us he knew what the flesh is capable of doing and that is what he's trying to bring across when you are being reborn when that rebirth takes place you forget about the flesh Yes, there'll be confusion in our minds. Yes, we try and correct these people. And I think the worst thing that we do is if we want to oppress them with the word of God. And that's not what Jesus was about. Jesus didn't have Bible at the time. Jesus didn't use theology. He didn't come across with, you know, the things you have to do, giving them scripture. When he spoke to Nicodemus, when he speaks to, when he approached people, people who are hurt, we, we saw where he, um, according to scripture, we saw where his, his place was. It was with the hurt and with the broken and with the needy. He came to them and he showed them love and he showed them compassion. He fed them. That's the God um, who we serve. Is the one who comes and he looks beyond the flesh, he looks beyond this clay jar or this vessel, and he reaches into your soul. That constant um, battle that your soul has with your flesh is going to continue until the day you die. But you have to come to a place where you allow salvation and redemption to take place. And that is the thing you need to study and understand and push towards is to understand who I am in Christ, understand who my spirit is in Christ, and realize that this is just temporary. You might be sitting in a position where you're confused about your sex or your gender. You're confused about who I am, who I'm supposed to be. And we will not get the answers, but what Jesus is trying to tell you is that this body is temporary. It's a messed up body. You feel that you are in a, the body of a woman, but you feel like doing it. It's all part of the enemy's plot to try and break you down and confuse you. And the answers that is so, um, so prevalent and the answers that prevail over time is that follow your heart, follow your instinct. And we are all born with different instincts. 
It's not about instincts, it's about the rebirth that Christ promised us in his word that needs to take place to, to sort out the inner man because that is what's most important to God. If you seek after Jesus and you seek after redemption, and salvation it's a process that will bring sanctification that will bring purification that brings regeneration into place so that you can reach, reach glorification jesus knew what was on the other side of the cross he knew that if this body is beaten and it's broken and it's pierced and it's torn apart he knew that he was he couldn't wait to to embody his glorified body because that's the body that we will all be getting one day if we're not going to be put into the pit of hell or into the burning flames of the lake of fire. If we obey him now, yes, things, the world will lead you astray. The world will tell you to go and have that sex change. It's not the answer. I know the battle that people are fighting with is real. It's a real battle that needs real answers. It doesn't need theology. It doesn't need sermons that will condemn and confuse you they need to be treated with love we all need to be treated with love in that regard and with all due respect we're not doing it we're judging people and we're trying to um you know beat them down with the word of god with bible bashing with this is what scripture says and this is what and i'm i'm guilty of that but I spend time with God and I've asked him, how do we approach the situation? There's no real answer in your word that says a transgender is going through ABC. They will go and they will seek answers. I know they will seek answers from, from pastors. I, I, I've um, studied a few cases where they will go and they will look for spiritual guidance and spiritual answers. They'll go to secular counselors and psychologists to find help. And, you know, it's a confusing process that they go through. But not just them, not to just single them out. All of us, whatever we're struggling with, we want that answers to why am I trapped in this body? Why is this body not what I want it to be like? It's, 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 even though you have that perfect body, even though you have that fit body, you have to work to get to that body or you have to work to maintain that body. You have to eat well, you have to exercise that work. That there's work that needs to go into you maintaining that well-groomed and well-exercised and worked out body. You can see what you, what you eat in your house by how you, what your body looks like basically. So you get exposed in that way. So if you understand that when you, you seek God's face and you truly repent and you really ask him to guide you through the situation, if you are feeling confused about this body that you are trapped in now, just know that that is not, it's the reality of this world, the reality of sin and this fallen world, but it's not where we are going to end up one day. So instead of being burned in a lake of fire for eternity, Rather see God's face, seek after salvation and redemption and understand as much as these are big words, there's a whole lot of teachings on how to, how to, be, how to be saved and how to walk this road of salvation. It's going to be an ongoing battle of laying down your life, laying down your ways, laying down your desires and your lusts. And the Bible warns us that these type of things will happen in the days to come and it's happening all over us where a whole lot of sin is being um, justified and we are allowed to sin the way we do because we want to go after our desires we tell the world tells people to follow their hearts and follow their dreams and follow their desires if you want to be a man go ahead and be a man irrespective of what the word of god says and we are not equipped, I feel, as the church maybe or as the saints of God to love these people through this process. Nicodemus was a man of God. Every man of God and woman of God have struggles and issues too. Personal um, struggles, physical struggles, 
you know, putting on your, your priestly garments or your pastoral suit or whatever it is that you're wearing, just like Nicodemus, a priest, a, a Pharisee rather, who came and approached Jesus in the nighttime. Because obviously he had his reasons why he wanted to speak to Jesus at night, at night. Because he realized that this was a man who understood and he obviously watched Jesus from day one, what he was about, who he reached out to, how he treated people with love and compassion and care. Yes, he will convict you, but he'll give you the answer. And he will tell you to pick up your cross and follow me. He will tell you to, I lay down my life, so you have to lay down. He was the example and Nicodemus saw this and he realized that whether he was too busy during the day, whether he didn't want it to be seen with Jesus at night, maybe he just felt like, you know, nobody understands him, nobody gets him. And even though he was a Pharisee, he needed to carry that, um, that image of being a Pharisee. You have to carry that image of being an apostle, a preacher, a teacher, a man and a woman of God. And nobody needs to see that battle that you are struggling with with your flesh. Nobody needs to see that. But if Jesus says that this is what you have to do and you come and you lay yourself before him and you ask him to just come and let your redemption take place. I'm laying down and I'm crucifying my flesh because at the end of the day, I want to be embodied with that glorified body that Jesus came when he resurrected, resurrected and he showed off his glorified body to us. In Revelation 1, we see him in the heavenly realm where he stands and the apostle john describes what he looks like in his glorified body because the apostle john knew him as as the jesus who walked the earth he saw jesus um, after his resurrection he saw him but he still recognized him as his friend as his teacher his rabbi his master and here he gets to see jesus in his full glory as the messiah as as the uh, one that looks like the son of man he describes him in all his glory you can read revelation chapter one and see what it was that jesus was pushing forward towards what it was when he allowed his body to be crucified beaten and broken and crucified and laid down the flesh so that one day he can uh, get that glorified body and just um, be rid of all this that we are trapped in Unfortunately, we are in this world and the more you begin to meditate on that fact and the more you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to work with you, you will, you will tap into the reality of what it is to be born into a body, into a sinful body, into this nature that is trying to trap us and consume us. But there is help. And Jesus is the only helper, the only counselor, the only comforter. That power of the Holy Spirit is a power that can change you around. Is a power that can help you crucify your body and crucify your flesh and lay it down. So that you can live the life that you were purposed to live. And not be consumed about this weight that you have to carry about. Am I female? Am I male? Is this who I am supposed to be? <clears throat> Because even though that is not your, your battle, whether you're male or female, I know we all have battles in our physical bodies. I know we are limited in our physical bodies. We are limited to the things that we can do and the things that we want to do, places we want to go, things we want to experience. And some of us are just limited. But when God starts working and redemption starts taking place and salvation starts, starts taking place, it all equals out to glorification.